RJ's uh, a, a great receiver. He's not a, a role player, a good receiver. He's an all league great receiver, and he showed it today. Lance's long touchdown run and stuck in block for like five seconds to spring. Yeah, I didn't see that, but that's something that uh, obviously we take a lot of pride in as wide receivers of blocking downfield. Do you think this is as well as Easton has thrown the ball, just accuracy and sharpness, especially early on? Yeah, I, I th he, once again, he had a great day, and he felt really confident in our game plan, and he and I talked throughout the week that this might be what they try to do, uh, which is just stack everybody to try to stop us from running the football, and they have talented kids up front. That front four is really good, and so we knew we had to uh, make, make some uh, – um, hey, on some one-on-one -on -one matchups, and uh, I thought he was really sharp. And the other thing, he was on target with his receivers from a communication standpoint as far as breaking off some routes where they were playing press coverage and R.J. was able to uh, throw them by and, and make some big catches. Chris, when did you know about Nick and give him the go-ahead? Was it literally a game-time decision, or did you know earlier in the week? Um, he practiced on Tuesday, and we felt pretty good, although we didn't uh, you know, go full speed. And then uh, each day he felt a little bit more comfortable. Uh, and, and that's why he did the surgery uh, when he did is the opportunity he'd have to play in, in these conference games are so valuable. And, and uh, I, I thought he played exceptionally well. Uh, we need to be smart with him as the week goes, you know, how much swelling he'll have and, and uh, some discomfort. But, uh, um, you know, when we lost Dan, then – Nick had to play every snap, and it was the idea of maybe rotating those guys, um, but uh, there was no more rotating when we lost Dan, and Nick had to go, and he did a great job. You know what happened with Marlette? Yeah, it was a knee, so we'll find out. You know, RJ is not the flashiest guy around, but he just, he just, he's always been there the last four years. He just always seems to make it Absolutely. He gets open, and he's much faster than people think. He's much stronger than people think. Uh, and he finds ways. He's the smartest kid as far as knowing how to attack somebody's leverage, and he made a couple of catches on the sideline that were just phenomenal where, uh, you know, Easton put it in only one spot that maybe somebody could get it, and, and RJ is one of those rare guys that can go. He's made catches. You guys have seen it for four years here that you think, how in the heck did he make that catch? Nobody makes that, but uh, RJ is a really confident guy, and uh, obviously Easton and, and RJ have a great rapport. You probably have to pass it, but do you think you pass it that much early? I think the first drive yeah. was all pass. I mean, do you think it would be that type of yeah, game? Yeah, we really did. You know, just because the looks that we had practiced against, we saw those looks and said, okay, they're going to keep stunning and blitzing up front. And uh, it, it's, it was pretty obvious that it was single coverage, and so we had to take some shots. Nick, a little fist pump coming out of the locker room. Was that a little sign to say you had time to play? I was just excited for him. I was so excited for him. You know, you get your whole senior year taken away uh, last year uh, after a couple ball games, and, and then to think it could have happened again. Uh, to what he's gone through, I, I, everybody uh, feels felt awful for him, but uh, everybody was excited. I know one thing. You ask our defensive guys, what a big lift when 49's playing. It's a big lift to our team. You described the play of your safeties, three, three interceptions today, how well they played on the back end. We thought that they locked in on some receivers, and, and I thought uh, Trey and, and James and Robbie, they break on the ball so well, and they read eyes so exceptionally well, and Coach Kleinerman and Coach Shep do a great job of, of really showing them a lot of the routes. One of the routes, I know the one that Robbie picked, uh, we'd practice on a bunch because we uh, we saw that com one coming, and Robbie did a great job of overlapping, reading the quarterback's eyes, and making a play. But those turnovers were critical because they were doing a good job of manufacturing some drives and keeping some drives alive with the quarterback running the football. And I thought the QB did a nice job of with his legs running, uh, but uh, we were able to finally get some pressure, force him into some uh, some tough throws, and our safeties came up big. Is it a weird halftime to see up 17-5 with only like eight minutes of time of possession? And yeah, then... it was. Um, and once again, they did some good things. You know, we have the safety, so they get two long possessions in a row. Uh, we didn't have a lot of plays offensively to really dissect, hey, what are we going to try to do other than, guys, we got to keep throwing it because of what they're trying to do to us defensively. And then uh, there was a couple of formations that they ran against us offensively that we were able to finally slow down that we hadn't seen, uh, similar to what they did to Illinois State. Uh, they have a, a, a a good, they do a good job of kind of finding some things maybe that are weaknesses in your defense and until you get a chance to uh, make adjustments, and that was hard. We didn't have a great chance to make adjustments because we were out there so much. Is there a concern that Marlette may be gone for an extended period of time? Yeah, potentially. You know, We'll find out either tomorrow or Monday. Chris, 
You, you get an explanation on what happened with Cole? The was it a targeting? What was the it, deal? it was a, it was a targeting, uh, and and I don't know. I'll have to find out uh, as far as does on the review. I thought it was in the shoulder, but I understand they're going to always protect uh, the quarterbacks, and, and none of us want to change that as far as the protection. But uh, they said it was a, a head-to-head shot. Is he eligible for the next game? He is because it was in the first half. Okay. You just missed the uh, uh, whatever the subsequent half is. So. What happened to the safety? It looked like the start of the play was kind of. You know, I was making an adjustment on defense, and I never saw it. And so uh, we'll, we'll find out. The dressed Holden was that the plan altogether, or was he not going to play whatsoever? No, he wasn't going to play at all. But we needed another signaler. And uh, Cole had a hard time doing it with one hand, and so we had Holden uh, as another signal in case something happened to Easton and Henry had to go in and Easton couldn't signal and Cole couldn't signal. Uh, we had Holden. So, um, you know, that would probably be a home game deal only.